Howdy, cadre. Uh, I figured I'd talk about the server I'm starting a little bit and show you what I've got planned. Um, yeah, literally months of thought and preparation have gone into this already. Um, not a ton of in-game time. I'm just talking about, uh... Thoughts about the idea of the server, um, concepts involved, playing on some servers. Um, yeah, a lot of brainstorming, testing, um, research, online research about options. Um, sunset, well, let's head to the bear cave. Um, which is what I, t t a little safe spot I have started for sleeping that's nearby spawn. Um, we're using cherry blossom wood. Uh, I have a dog that just kind of wandered up to us. Anyway, I plan to add more beds here and, uh, People can start out sleeping here uh, for respawn. It's nice that it's so close to start. And yeah, it's it's nice that um, spawn is within 50 blocks of zero zero. Um, this here is zero zero and Oh, geez, where to start? Um, so, the... Yeah, I've gotten involved, involved in a few other servers. Public servers that are... <clears throat> kind of fan servers to for YouTubers. Um... Yeah, so that, that kind of inspired all this um, to, to for me to start thinking about this. <coughs> um, in case it isn't clear from my YouTube channel, um, I've been a Minecraft player for a long time, but I've always played alone on my own hard drive. Um, on PC Java version anyways but I've and, and I've always enjoyed creating new worlds seeing new seeds um, you know how, how the world generation works and I've enjoyed um, watching reviews of seeds like best seeds people sharing um, and more recently this has gotten crazy because there are a lot of third party programs that can run the world generation of Minecraft without running Minecraft um, so it can simulate the world terrain generation based on the seed and you can use that to search for uh, seeds with key characteristics like a village near spawn or um, whatever. Um, you know, specific biomes or structures. Anyways, uh, so this here, I'm not going to reveal the seed. I'm going to keep it secret for as long as I can. But this here is one of my favorite seeds ever, and it only works this way. I mean, this seed only functions for what I'm excited about since the Caves and Cliffs update. But I'm excited that um, the newest update, 1.2, which is Trails and Tales, um, 
has has kept everything I loved about the world generation and it's sprinkled in the cherry blossoms um, around the mountains that I've, I've fallen in love with. So <clears throat> the basic idea of the server um, is that we're building a, a community focused kingdom that stretches basically here from spawn east 2000 um, but the kingdom includes you know this huge square that goes 2000 in each direction from here um, I'm using these kind of as monument stones um, these are gonna mark the center of roads and um, yeah, they're inspired by survey techniques. Anyways, rather than getting bogged down in that. So the there's a basic tension I've noticed on servers between people who want to work together, um, communicate, cooperate, coordinate, collaborate. Um, and... People who don't now other motives might be solo play, uh, PvP or even more combative play style. I've met people who who aren't as combative as they are um, sneaky or. I mean, there's various styles. Some people like to burrow and spy, um, collect evidence. Some people like to show off in various ways. Some people like the PvP or the even the conflict or destruction. Anyways, but I I wanted to allow for people of various play styles and intents. But I didn't want, you know, some people's desire to grief or whatever to negatively impact others. So I, I've set up kind of a rule system or a system of expectations. Um, and this was a big part of what I've been thinking for, of for the last... I'm not even going to get to travel, am I, from here? Um, so, yeah, let me uh, let me explain the basics from here quick, and then um, maybe in separate videos I'll 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 do a couple tours. That's a good idea. I can spread them out a little bit. Um, so we're going to do a tour west for the exiles and then a tour east for the um, subjects of, of the king. Um, and this, this strategy for how to handle this world is inspired by this seed. It works particularly well with this seed. Um, but it could be applied elsewhere. Um, but to explain what I'm talking about. So spawns right near here, and this is the zero, zero. And the, the, the kingdom and the control of, of the king extends 2,000 in each direction. And you know, the diagonals even further arguably uh, to 2000 2000 and and so on um, so most of this area centered around spawn um, centered around the center zero zero uh, is going to be under the expectations of working together towards building a kingdom um, with a lot of conventions rather than rules uh, we're going to be building around 
roadways that kind of define the space and um, the, the journey from spawn to uh, this cave city I have planned and, and other cities on the way. And part of what I want to do is, is for players who are really actively involved and who are interested and excited about this cooperation, communication, collaboration, coordination, um, I want to give them each their own city to build. Um, and I have general ideas, you know, locations planned for you know, a, a lumberjack city, a uh, mining city, like kind of a fisherman's bay, uh, kind of a uh, western, I was thinking right here, just do kind of a western town. Although it's already, yeah, it's already maybe changing from my a little original plans since I build this wall but yeah there's part of what I pl have planned is adaptability and you know if a lot of people get involved and want to start their own cities there's plenty of space for that um, I just have a few in mind so far and kind of general themes for them But the end, the general idea is to let people specialize in the way they want to. Another sunset, fun. Um, for people who really enjoy mining, uh, you know, they can collect resources for the kingdom, or they can help dig tunnels for the kingdom. Um, th there's. Uh, you know, and for people who enjoy building, that's going to be exciting to work with them because I'm, oh boy, I've got a bachelor's in architecture that's doing nothing. I might as well apply it in Minecraft. And since then, I've worked for civil engineers and surveyors, um, and I've, I've been playing Minecraft since, uh, before the official release, you know, the... Ah, sunset. I'll, I'll show you the Path of Exile in a separate video. Um, I suppose it's going to start to get dangerous, arguably, here. It's kind of cool to see this at night. Um, so, okay, the general plan is... Subjects of the kingdom are going to head east. And this road winds through valleys to this cave city I want to build. Um, and so we can pass through several... I mean, really, there's already two villages on the way that are naturally spawned. And that's another thing. If, if people really enjoy the idea of moving into a village and taking care of the villagers and expanding that village, um, th that would be awesome project uh, for somebody to take on. And there's a few of those that I, I can hand out. Yep, we're starting to get... Oh, geez, he's a special guy. Whoa, he's knocking at the door, too. Well, I'm up on the wall. You know what? That doesn't really do much. Oh, I got boots out of it. What are they? Protection 2. Okay. That might be nice to go to the nether. Anyway, so... Yes, yeah, some, some very specific things planned, like this is going to be a tunnel that heads straight east through the mountains. And by going down just slightly, um, we can get all the way over to a pretty central point out east for the, the various, various cities that are going to be built over there. So this will be a nice shortcut under the mountain, 
and very direct. Um, and then the road's going to wind through the valleys and, and cities. And then heading west is the Path of Exiles, which, uh, whoop. Well, yeah. I will clean that up later, I guess. Um, oh. I just lost my signs. Dang, nab it. Aw. Okay, that was random key presses, but it serves what it does. Okay, I didn't really want to deal with that, and I'll need to clean that up later now, but, um, okay, so, the idea is, um, you know, now I lost the signs, I didn't even read them to you. So yeah, subjects go that way, and then exiles go this way, and exiles can be people who, um, yeah, like I was kind of saying, just want to play solo, um, want to want to play with the out without the ideas of rules or, or communication or whatever um, and that 2000 line it doesn't have to be exact it's mostly ocean where that falls um, and the idea is the king's protection extends probably a little bit into the seas because I don't want I don't want people building bridges right up to 2000 and feeling like they're they're getting some okay I don't know where that came getting some advantage um But, yeah, so the basic idea is that uh, exiles, in, including people who break minor rules but want to stay on the server, you know, I, it, it, we can kind of role play it in the game that d d you're an exile now and be gone with you. Um, and in that way, if it's not a major violation... It gives them a chance to um, redeem themselves through behavior and, and better attitude and stuff. I've got a cat playing with lights. I don't want that. You gonna quit it? <laughs> hey. I guess she stopped. Okay. No. Hey. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Hey. Yeah. yeah. All right. Oh boy, she she really likes that thing I built. I kind of regret it at this point um, she's doing things that Sundog never did that's for sure makes me nervous I guess some of these things weren't up when he was that age anyways he's mellowed out so okay um so I, I guess just to finish the rules the basic idea I, I decided a lot of this stuff is covered by user agreements that people have already signed up for so there's a basic idea of rule zero and this is for this uh, server rule just server rule zero is is the expectations um of 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 common decency and normal game use that are probably already laid out 
on the Microsoft Mojang, you know, terms of service conditions, um, as well as, you know, some people are playing on different platforms and those cover it as well, whether it's PlayStation, Xbox, etc. Um, so, and then, you know, on the Discord, I've laid out more specifics about this Rule Zero which is, you know, you should own a valid Minecraft copy. Um, and you shouldn't be using any malicious software or, or hacks. Um, there's really not much point to cheating for clout on this casual server. Um... So, and then a lot of the harassment stuff is now covered by these other agreements. So I'm hoping people will know not to um, target each other with harassment or um, leaking personal information, um, taking grudges from outside of the game in or from inside of the game out into the real world, any of that stuff. Um, and in terms of like hacks, there's a lot of plugins and software that's gray areas. And you know, it's probably not worth it. Hey guy. Um, There, there may be some things I'm sensitive about, like elytras and obviously certain types of griefing that are going to affect the play experience of others. You know, I'd like to beat the dragon as a group with several people. I, I don't have interest in doing it alone or... Um, you know, racing to it or whatever. I'd rather do it with, you know, four people or something, if possible. If there's enough people on the server to have a larger group, I think it would be a lot of fun and, and special to have more. But, um, it yeah, it seems like if you're going to do it with two people... Well, obviously one person, you might as well be on your own server um, unless you need contributions from others just to get there or something uh, anyways yeah and with just one other person it seems like a waste to, to not have more um, when you've got all the resources to handle a group and if you can find Four people that can schedule it in the reason in the next foreseeable future. Why take away the opportunity from two of them just to get it done quick? So yeah, there's stuff like that that I might be sensitive about, but um, and the big overall planning stuff. But in general, the thought is. Subjects of the kingdom who want to work together, collaborate. Um, move east through the valley and then uh, exiles can go west down the path of exile um, which isn't very long and then there's ocean that takes you to 2000 and once you get to that 2000 threshold you can just land and settle um, wherever you see fit you can stay on your boat and keep going or so I'm gonna do a couple more videos now um, introducing these places before that let me show you a little bit more around spawn um, so the well and some general story stuff yeah the, the, the king is a specific person who's also on YouTube 
but until I hear back from him, we're going to try and keep his name and identity secret. But we are building this with the hope that he might join at some point. Um, so the, the king is not a lie. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I'm drinking a beverage. Has me a little bit phlegmy. So the um, the continent is a large peninsula. Connects with other lands to the north. Um, do I have a map on me? No, I've I've not yet made maps in this version of the world. I have in others. Um, So yeah, we're building this all for the king, and what? I lost my train of thought. Um, the the yeah, I need to I need to monster proof this. I need a lot more lights right here so that we don't have those problems. Um. Anyways, here near start. Okay, I, I'll get into subjects and exiles in the next video more, because we'll, the next two videos, we'll split those. We'll follow the path, we'll follow the road, um, and talk about those more in detail. But, but just a quick overview of the starter resources. Um, I went and got cherry blossoms from down the road, um, on, in the, in the mountain range, and... Um, I brought them here and started a little orchard. I had already cleared it slightly um, to get some wood, kind of the edge of the for forest. So I replanted it with the cherry blossoms to start getting those to use. Um, and yeah, I really like the cherry blossoms. I love the, the uh, petal, the petal flutter. Um, which really is the first indication of any wind that we've had in Minecraft. Um, I can't think of any flags or anything. There's, you, you know, the campfires have indication of air rising, the smoke rising. And the flags have a slight flutter. But this, this gives a, a directional drift that I think changes. I swear I keep hearing something. So anyways, right here near spawn, we have like the king's wall. Um, and that doorway will lead to the king's tunnel. Which will have the, the king's mines lining it. Um, but in this starter area, we've got a, a farm for some food. Um, and then this, this natural cave, which, um, is pretty much empty. It, it snakes around down there. Um, but I took the torches out cause it just kind of dead ends. There's not much down there. And instead of having to climb up and down through this cave, I built a, a bridge here um, that leads to what I'm calling the bear cave. Uh, B-A-R-E. Uh, because there's not much to it yet. Um, but I did coat it inside with the planks just for the nice warm feel and we have the bed um, What's my point? So then there's the back door to the bear cave which comes out to 
the Path of Exile, which currently is just um, a single gravel line. But I'll I'll show you. Hey, hey, it's daytime. It's daytime. That's how it's spelled. The the Bear Cave. It's a it's a it's a pun. It's fun. But the idea is it's here at, at start, just for starter purposes. Um, but then the intent is to start building starter houses and stuff around here. Um, with the idea being that in... Um, so these trees line the path... And then this wall kind of marks the start of the path. So anything inside this is going to be for for public use um, by exiles or anybody. Um, with the idea that exiles can sleep here and, and before they head west. And then probably just north here. Um, you know, and some starter resources for starter players of all sorts but then maybe just up here will be our first community um which will be just kind of a starter town of small houses um and the general idea i have for people is a progression of building and donating things um kind of modeled after the idea of house flipping where you'll move into a home build it up nice and then uh, sell it put it back on the market but the idea here is um, it, it's a fairly casual progression for people to build work towards something and contribute to the community and and um, earn earn a reputation and titles in game um so the idea is the first goal is build yourself a starter hut near spawn um and so that could be here in the exile zone or just outside of it one way or the other um and the requisites for that are, you know, a bed, a chest, a crafting table, the, the bare necessities with the idea that there's lumber and food nearby for starter purposes. So you're really just providing a starter hut that, that offers a, a bed uh, to set your spawn in. And when you complete that, um, you don't give it up right away because that's your house. And the idea is that people will have two houses. So you build, after your starter hut, you build a, like, starter home, a, f a farmstead style that's a slightly larger building. A small farm for yourself you know etc so you move from hut to house and those are both yours for as long as you want um, but the idea then is to build more things or better things and then start donating the old stuff so like if your third building is instead of a house um, you know maybe a store or an inn or a lumber mill or you know something larger and more public minded um, once you finish that then you can move out of either your starter hut or your homestead right so once you move all your stuff out of one of your first two homes you donate it um to the community to the kingdom and the idea is then that can either become public use 
or it can be given to a new player as a as a starter home um and so especially and the idea of that is that if everybody on the server has made a starter hut um after a while we can take away that requirement and new players can just be given a starter hut um, or maybe asked to improve it in some way for the right to live there something like that but the idea is to um, build property and if it's community minded then you can donate it to give up having to manage it um, And by managing it, I mean, like, providing some service related to what it is. Like, the hope is if there's a lumber mill, that somebody will keep a chest full of logs that people can just grab if they need, like, just one stack. And if there's a chest full and people just grab one stack, it should be easy to keep it full um, with regular play. But I don't want to demand anybody do anything, um, so there, there's not going to be expectations of any specific type of contribution. I just want to be talking about and coordinating these things um, in terms of sharing resources, helping each other with labor. Um, and ideas and inspiration uh, working together as a community towards common goals but with d diverse interests and um, and I'm hoping a community will allow people to really focus on their share uh, on their what they what interests them the most about Minecraft um, and, and share their enjoyment of that with others who have maybe a different thing they enjoy about Minecraft and um, yeah just celebrate and appreciate the diversity that the game allows um, Is that all the general stuff? So rule zero, maybe I got a little bit off track. Um, the idea of rule zero is it's it's all of the basics and specifics that should go without saying through the terms of service agreements that people have already made to, to get in here, you know. And there's my Mojang. Microsoft in terms of Minecraft and then there may be other platforms or communication services involved um, game game providers consoles that stuff and then there's also the terms of service for discord we're using discord to communicate um, because it provides an ongoing lasting way to interact that doesn't disappear with with like the Minecraft chat does the server chat um oh ba, 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 ba. Uh, what am i missing so yeah the rule zero stuff i'm hoping isn't going to be too much of an issue anything serious or technical like that i'll just ban people um, if needed and they can petition on discord if they want to get back on uh, if they want to explain themselves redeem themselves whatever for anything involving hacking or strange behavior that other players don't like harassment um, griefing anything like that that's serious I don't feel bad just kicking them off the server um, since it's a free server and we're I'm doing this kind of invite only through the discord um, so is that about cover it for now um, game rule zero okay 
the rest of the rules may overlap with game rule zero because a lot of the stuff is the same on all of these you know the the be considerate with each other and don't break laws and all that stuff i didn't say don't break laws yet but that's important too obviously if anybody is violating laws and i find out about it i'm just gonna ban them and again, they can talk to me through Discord if they really want, if they think I've misinterpreted. Cat fight, fun. Um, another sunset. So, but part of my idea of game rule zero is to separate it from in-game concerns. Game rule zero, I can take seriously. It. I'm calling it the goes without saying rule and that's why I'm naming it game rule zero and also because I don't think I should have to enforce it um, the these are terms of service terms and conditions that we've all supposedly read and agreed to as we signed up for the software you know, oh, I should go sleep again, I guess. I don't know why I went down on that side. Um, the, yeah, so I, those rules are obviously helpful because they make me feel better. Okay. Um, about enforcing those rules, you know, knowing that the larger you know, the, the, the providers, the game maker, the game owner, and the game providers, which includes the, the communication. That's partly what's getting weird is like there's dangerous organizations using things like Minecraft and Discord chat to plan illegal activities. <clears throat> so yeah, the companies have to start getting involved and explaining. And I don't Whoa, jeez. I don't think I should, like, have to say don't be planning to bomb people. Um, do I have arrows? Okay. Uh, so anyways, what have you. I'll do some tours in a second, but the game rules. Okay, so... I wanted to explain kind of the overlap and the rest of the rules. So, a lot, the idea of Game Room Zero is it's all the stuff I shouldn't have to say, but I feel like I should say anyways. And most of it is, you know, don't break laws, don't harass people, don't do malicious things with the software you know, hacking, um, don't violate other people's privacy, uh, all, all that stuff. Anyway, so the rest of the rules are more like in-game rules for the kingdom that I've decided I'd rather enforce casually um, within the game through communication and and stuff rather than any heavy handed way so and those rules are basic things like respect other players which means no harassment no swearing no PvP, 
Um, unless you know they're comfortable with that stuff. Like if you establish specific relationship with someone where they're okay with that, um, the PvP with each other, then that's fine by me, obviously. Um, even if you have a relationship where you want to surprise each other, just talk about it, have consent. It makes sense. Um, you can build houses across the street from each other here near spawn and whenever you run into each other on the street you can attach each other it'll be part of the lore of um spawn anyways the so respect other players okay respect other players work and I feel like that's part of the first one and again all of this should go without saying but most players should know the difference between world generated structures and player made structures and since we're working together towards uh, y you know a, a kind of shared vision um we're gonna assume things built are for the kingdom towards the kingdom and that they should be respected as part of the kingdom. And I'm going to play the role, role as of primary steward for the world, for the kingdom, for the king. Um, but I'm going to try and handle it in a fairly casual way where I'm accepting of other people's visions or ideas, play styles, etc. as long as they aren't um, incompatible with others. Uh, yeah. And then people who don't want to work with, okay, so rules, was that all the rules? I think there's kind of a third rule, respect the kingdom. which is a little bit more abstract. Well, and really respect the king is in there someplace, but with the king missing, uh, with the king not being present in the lands yet, that rule doesn't matter much except as it extends to all of the kingdom, which are is considered the lands, the subjects, all the property is con considered the king's in essence. And, uh, but, but it's also, yeah, I can talk about lordship later. I've been reading about it because of the inspiration of this endeavor. Anyways, and the five ranks of lords, at least in English, uh, fiefdom. So, yeah. The, did I get through everything? Okay, so the... Oh, serve, serve the kingdom. The idea is from negative 2,000, negative 2,000, across all the blocks to 2,000, 2,000. Um, is, is the king's continent the king's lands and the idea is to serve and protect those lands to be um, of, of good use to its inhabitants and uh, it's some aspect of beauty I don't want um, a whole lot of floating cobblestone sky bridges or like the thing with pixel art it's it's kind of cheap when it's just giant and dominates the landscape 
but it's not too hard to incorporate it into the side of a building or a, a giant wall or something so that it goes it just location can change it from looking like a gaudy billboard to, to being some sort of landmark or piece of art that makes more sense to be there and getting into that you know that can get into like you know I don't want swear words written in the landscape or political messages or there's other offensive things um, but those rules are more abstract and it's going to be hard to I don't want to try and define a bunch of specific rules and limits I'd rather feel them out as we go talk with people about what bothers them and with the people causing those problems about how we can adjust and establish rules if we need them as we go but if we don't um, just play casually towards the benefit of all involved with the idea being you know um, mutual respect that almost covers it you know mutual respect for the game experience for people's different play styles and preferences um, Yeah, I think it could be a lot of fun. Insert catchphrase here. <laughs>